Hi, I'm John. No, the other one. And whether you're a cabinet maker, a firewood person, or even a meat smoker, knowing the moisture content of your wood is very, very important. And just as important is having the correct tool to let you know what the moisture content of your wood is. And there are no shortage of wood moisture content meter videos here on YouTube, and I'm here to tell you, they all stink on ice. And it's not necessarily a fault of the content creator, for they know not what they do. Either they're showing bad technique on how to test the moisture, or they're delivering results that really don't mean anything. So in today's video, I'm aiming to make the definitive wood moisture content meter video. And how is mine gonna be different? We're gonna use the scientific method. Also, we're gonna use some laboratory grade equipment that I spent a boatload of money on just to prove a point. And as a bonus, we're gonna see if it's worth it to buy a more expensive model versus a more cheap model. Is there a difference? And is either one more accurate? So enough of this jibber jabber, let's get inside the laboratory. I'm gonna explain the process and get this thing moving. All right, so now that we're down here in the laboratory, this is where my video and other videos start to differentiate from each other. There are two different types of wood content moisture meters. They are both pinned and pinless. Now each one has their own advantages. What, and what I've decided to do today was to test out both of them. And just like anything else in life, there are expensive versions and less expensive versions of the same product. So what I have today is a smattering of, of two different versions of each. Now this moisture content meter was sent to me by Tessman. It's about $15 or so right now on Amazon. And this is representing our less expensive option. At the other end of the spectrum, this is a FLIR MR55. This is the most expensive pinned version of a moisture content meter that I can find on Amazon today. This one goes for about 160 bucks. We're gonna be testing other ones better than the other. Better, I shouldn't use the term better. Which one is more accurate than the other? If there is even a difference. And the other type of moisture meter that you can get are pinless. And for these, I've chosen the R&D MT28 moisture meter. This is the least expensive pinless contact moisture meter I could find on Amazon. This one was about 40 bucks. And on the other end of this spectrum, we got the Big Daddy, the Mac Daddy, the most expensive wood content, moisture content meter that you can buy today, the Wagner Orion 950. This one is about $600. It's often regarded as the gold standard. Favored by the discerning woodworker around the world, this is the Mac Daddy. And we're gonna see how these less expensive meters compare. I'm not doing a comparison to this, that wouldn't be fair, and that's not what I promised you in the beginning, but we're gonna see how they all rank, how they stack up. And now, how are we gonna do that? Am I just gonna go randomly sticking pins and pinless meters into wood all willy-nilly? No, absolutely not. That's not how my channel rolls. I went into full darkness mode and went through and printed out and read all the ASTM designations for the standing test methods for direct moisture content measurement of wood and wood-based materials, and also the standard test method for use and calibration of handheld moisture meters, which if anyone's interested is the ASTM D4442 and the ASTM D4444 respectively, in case you need something to do on a Saturday night and you really wanna have your hair blown back. So in order to really follow these testing methods, I had to really think about things. First thing they talk about is in the environment. Now I don't have a full laboratory despite what it looks like, but this room down here, my office, is the only one that doesn't have any, doesn't, it doesn't have any windows. It's also underground. So as it stands right now, the two things that they talk about as far as environmental concerns are, there are no drafts, the temperature is relatively controlled, and we also have a humidity down here of less than 70%, which is called out in the procedure. So you can see we're right at about 65 degrees, and it's about 48% humidity down here. So terrifically comfortable. It's also suited well for testing. What are we gonna be testing with? So what we're gonna be doing is called the oven dry test method. Now that's the first differentiation between my video and other people's videos. You'll see a guy have four, five, 22 different meters, and then they just stick them into a piece of wood, and then he compares those to nothing. And that's not really telling the viewer anything. 
What he's doing when he's writing his numbers down, comparing one model to another with different numbers, really what he's doing is testing repeatability, but not accuracy, because out of all the videos I've watched, no one has tested against a known moisture content sample. Meaning, you could take, you could take the cheap version and the most expensive version, stick them into the piece of wood, get a number, but you really don't know what it means. Are they saying this one's better because it's cheaper and they sent it to them for free? Or are they saying this one's better because it's really, really expensive, it's the gold standard, and they want to feel cool for saying it? The reality is, out of all the videos that I've ever seen, no one could give me a straight answer. And the astute commenter will call them out on that and go, you really didn't show us anything. You're, you're just jabbing meters into wood. So, we're gonna do what's called the oven dry method. Now this is a laboratory oven. This unit's whole job in life is to maintain a temperature within one degree. And it's the heart of this test. Now here's the beauty with these ovens. And why did you get a laboratory oven? Why are you flexing on us pours? Why can't you just use a toaster or your regular oven? Well, here's the thing. When you're dealing with combustible materials like wood, your normal oven doesn't, doesn't just go to 350. It might go to 500 and then come back down and then settle out and, and catch that average. And it might go down 10 degrees and then kick back on and then it might, it might go up to 420, nice, and then come back down to 350. Laboratory ovens are made to maintain within one degree of your set point. So that's the difference and that's what you're paying for on a laboratory oven. Super duper important to get accurate results. And now over here, we have a laboratory grade scale or balance, which is called out in the testing method that says it needs to be able to weigh at least a thousand grams, which we have, and also be capable of weighing to the nearest hundredth of a gram, which we have. And this will typically result in an accuracy of better than 0.1% moisture content. So you're not using mama's flour scale from up in the kitchen. So I bought this laboratory grade with the calibration weights scale so we can get an accurate measurement. So right about now you're asking yourself, testing what, measuring what? Good question. So I'm gonna use this totally not obvious reshoe to explain the scientific method we're gonna to use to perform these tests. I'm gonna pull three samples each from three different examples of wood. The first one's gonna be a piece of oak that I've had upstairs in the firewood rack for two years. The next sample is going to be a piece of oak that I've had up in the firewood rack for one year. And finally, I'm gonna cut three samples from a regular prime grade stud. Something as if you had to test the moisture content on some construction supplies. Kind of cover all of our wood moisture sampling bases here. Once those samples are all cut up, we're gonna bring them down here. Then we're gonna test with the moisture testers all the different moisture contents on all the pieces of wood. And we're gonna record them. Then we're gonna take the samples, put them on the scale, weigh them. Then we're gonna put them in the oven, cook them for about 24 hours, and then we're gonna take them out and weigh them again. After we record those numbers, we have to do a quick little math calculation, figure out what the actual moisture content of the wood that we're testing is. Then and only then can we compare to the results that we got when we were initially moisture testing our wood. We know what the moisture content actually was, in comparison to the results that we got when we tested them earlier. At that point, we'll be able to determine which one of these meters is accurate, repeatable, and if they're worth it. So now let's go upstairs, prep some samples, and then bring them back down to the lab. All right, as we go through the fast motion here of prepping up our samples, I just wanted to point out that I made it a point to purposely use the heartwood and not the sapwood so that we had an apples to apples comparison on the old oak, the new oak, and just the two by four naturally is gonna be the center of the board in the heartwood. So I wanted to make that perfectly clear in case the question arises. Now watch your fingers while you're cutting, stupid. So now that we have our samples, we're ready to start weighing. The oven has a little while to go, so now I can go into the scale a little bit and explain to you the difference between mama's cooking scale and a laboratory scale. Now I've already turned it on, leveled it, and calibrated it, but why did I mention earlier about being in a room with no windows and no drafts and the humidity? That's the difference between what you'll have upstairs and what you'd have in a laboratory. Now, I, again, I calibrated it, put the calibrated weight on it. Exactly 500 grams. 
So we know that we're calibrated and we know that the measurements that we get off of this machine are gonna be super duper accurate. Now, once I set it and calibrate it, the only motion that's gonna be on top of here is going to be the wood. I'm not gonna move this. It was going to be in the same exact location, being that the fans aren't running in, in the room here. I don't need to have one of those wind guides with the door. I, I didn't need to buy that because the air is pretty still down here. Also, being that we're in my office in the basement, there should be no vibrations from the floor because it's a concrete floor. That's how my samples are all prepped up. Got them cut to the samples that they said they had to be at least an inch thick. So I'm going, I was shooting for somewhere in the neighborhood of an inch and a half thick on everything. This is just a regular two by four. So I know that the dimensions are good there. On the pieces of firewood that I cut down, they're not exact because I don't have a planer, but I just use the table saw as a planer. Uh, another piece of advice, uh, don't do that. Uh, it's not good. Anyway, I did have to turn the oven off because believe it or not the vibration of the oven's fans were affecting the scale so i had to turn it off it is up to temperature and now we're going to start we're going to start weighing what i'm going to do now is i'm going to moisture test each piece of wood as if we were out in the yard or at a job site doing an inspection whatever it is after the wood dries, we're gonna be able to see how accurate these numbers that we get now with the actual moisture content that we're gonna find out once the wood comes out of the oven. And I think it's also an opportunity to talk about the meters themselves. So let's get into that. I've always made it a point on this channel, you've heard me say dozens of times that I will never take a product. However, when somebody says I'm gonna give you a $10 moisture meter, you go, all right, fine. I don't feel like I'm selling out my soul for $10. And I'm really throwing it against the gamut of other meters. So while this was sent to me for free, I spent like two grand on this testing equipment. Also like the video, help me out a little bit. So with that, let's get into it. This is the Tessman TWM 186. Comes with Duracell, which I like. Not some bootleg off brand. Pretty nice. Can put it in your pocket. Not overly intrusive. Pins on it are nice and thick. Now I think everybody in the everybody in the wood cutting community, specifically firewood has a has a general. You know the one that I'm talking about. I threw that one away. I was guilty of having one, but the pins on it were so so flimsy. I was constantly breaking the pins. It's pretty nice. Nice thick pins on it. So those are probably stand up better than the ones on the general that, you know, everybody has. So let's check over the instructions here. See if there's any sort of calibration or anything that has to be done. Okay, so we got one through seven. Material type one, two, three, four. Okay, what does that what does that mean? Okay, down here. It tells you the oak. So we're going for material two. Okay, so I like that that's a little bit, it's not comprehensive, but in the scale here, it does if you know your species. Let's uh let's see. Here's another thing uh, on the videos that I saw. I just saw guys just jamming their, jamming it in willy nilly. There actually is a procedure on how to test moisture in the wood with a pin type moisture meter. I don't know if it's just the guy thing of not reading instructions, but when you're sticking the pins in, you have to go with the grain. It doesn't work otherwise. Your numbers are nothing. So let's, uh, let's stick this in, see how it does. All right, I'm, I'm giving it some pretty good Pretty good pressure, that says 24.6. So this is A3 before, 24.6. So next up for pins, pinned units, we have the FLIR. Again, this one is about 150, 160 bucks. I'll put it on the screen here. Uh, and this is the most expensive pinned meter that you can buy. Does more expensive mean better? Who knows, let's try it out. Oh, okay, nice. Smaller than the General, but bigger than the Tessman. Oh, it's got a case, some instructions, a little bit of propaganda, we don't need that. We got a bunch of extra pins in there. Bunch of extra pins, that's pretty nice. And we got some batteries. We got, looks like Energizer. Cool, again, name brand, like that. I like FLIR stuff. I, mean, I don't know nothing about wood meters, but they're thermal imagers. 
or the bomb. All right, it's got a little built-in flashlight action. Kind of good, I guess, if you're in a dark spot, checking moisture. Keep your jokes to yourself, boys. Let's keep this above board. Let's see if we have to do any calibration or anything like that. The uh, cap does have the built-in calibration nubs in it. Let's see if we got to do anything. Quick start, power button, select material group. So we got to select the material group again. Okay, so we got one through 11, which is a little bit more than the testman. Okay, so let's get to the materials. See measurement consideration section. All right, so now this is saying, this is a, uh, this is a strike against. This is, this is why you know uh, I don't get paid for these things. Now here's the instructions. It says material groups one to eight are for timber, nine is for plywood, 10 is for brick, and 11 for is, is for cement. Download the user manual at support.flare for complete details. So, you know, I'm out in the field, I get a new toy, and now I gotta go downloading things? Just put it in the book. That, that's a mark off, that's whack. I don't know what I gotta do, I gotta go download things? And of course it wants me to download an app. Whack. <sighs> I'll be right back. All right, so we're back, I got the actual user's manual, which you have to download, whack. Okay, so with calibration, so we keep this on one, we touch it to T, it should read 18%, reads 18%, units self-calibrated. So now we have to go down to find which materials, so we know, what are we gonna do here first? Pine, oh, it's not in alphabetical order. Who put this thing together? What the hell kind of wood is a stud? Is that yellow pine? What? kind of pine is a stud? I'm gonna go with yellow pine, which was group three. That's a guess on my part. Not the most user-friendly. Okay, so where are we at? C3? Says 15, and there's no decimals on this. So the FLIR says 15. There's a difference. C2, this is 16, round it up. I guess the FLIR is pretty nice. It's actually not as user friendly as the Tessman. Uh, it does not have a decimal place, so you're only getting whole numbers. So for $155, it's rounding up for you. The flashlight's nice, the thicker pins, the thick pins are nice, better than the general. They're not as thick as the Tessman. The manual not coming with the unit is whack. The carrying case is nice. And in reference to the manual, the species that you can check accurately is far greater with the FLIR than it is with the Tessman. So if you're like a woodworker and you work with a lot of exotic species, the Tessman was like oak, pine, spruce, elm, regular, wo regular woods, whereas this gives a far more extensive list that you could accurately test with this. Is that worth it to you? Up to you, I don't know. Nice feel, rubberized. Overall, it's pretty nice. All right, so next up, we have the R&D. This is the lower end of the scale for pinless. Again, uh, I think this was uh, in the $40 range. If I'm wrong, I'll put it down here. Uh, okay, got a little Crown Royal bag. We got GP, no-name battery. Very limited user guide, but you know, we'll give it its... We'll give it a fair shot. This is very light. I'm not gonna say chintzy, but it, it feels light. Okay, so the R&D, it says do not calibrate it, it's calibrated. It does make mention of not, not leaving it on top of a conductive material. So this is a good chance to talk about the differences between a pin and a pinless. So with a pinned unit, you're only getting the depth of the pins worth of measurement. So for you, that might be good enough. That little pointy bit is all you're measuring in the wood to get the moisture content of. Whereas contact or pinless, you're putting this pad onto the wood, that's my finger, you can get up to three quarters of an inch into the depth of the wood to get a better picture, if you will, of the moisture content of the wood. So if you leave it on something that's wooden, you might be getting an inaccurate reading. So for that, I'm actually gonna hold this in my hand to keep it up off of the thing uh, because these are small enough. But if you were doing a big slab or something, you'd need to figure out a way to elevate your measuring, the, the item that you're measuring off of your table. So with that said, this is relatively simple to use. The only, uh, this 
one does have a flashlight on it as well. It's pretty nice uh, if you need it. There's a, not a whole lot of uh, like reading through the manual. There's not a lot going on in this manual. So it just says to put hardwood, softwood, uh, wall or masonry as your selection. So we're gonna go to softwood, lift it up off the wall, measure. And this is saying 19.4. On C1, 19.4. What do I have? Do I have something that's plastic? Non-conductive. Let's see, is my hand affecting it any? Oh, it is. That was stupid. Okay, scratch that, scratch those results. 17.4, okay, that's more suited. I was kind of tipped off by the fact that it was so off. 17.4, all right. I have to say, ease of use on this one is pretty good. Really straightforward. It does feel kind of chintzy in the hand. Uh, it's light, I mean, I guess you could say, oh, if I have to carry this thing around all day, it's not very heavy. Uh, it's easy to use, drops right in. I don't know, seems pretty good. I mean, they all seem pretty good. However, data-wise, these numbers are quite a bit different from the other ones on, on certain pieces. So it's gonna be interesting when we have a known, an actual known content and when we test them to see what they look like because there are some, between the Testman and this one, there are differences across the board. So now we got the big dog. This is the Wagner Orion 950. This is the gold standard as far as price point goes. Let's see how it is standard wise against all the other ones. Now, I'm gonna really try not to geek out over the price. Yes, it's $600. Uh, I'm not gonna try to influence it in any sort of way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda go over it the same way I did with the cheaper models. So let's get into it. Right off the bat, obviously, hard case. Something this expensive, once you're done with it, put it back in the box, back on the shelf, keep it out of trouble, away from sawdust, away from tools. I, I kinda like that. All right. Got a little bit of propaganda. Instruction manuals, a significant instruction manual. Nice. Species settings, all right. So we don't have to download an app, I think. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's nice. Okay, so a little bit more propaganda. And an instruction, and an invitation to a webinar over wood moisture testing, cool. Here's the unit, a little bit more gravity, protective rubber coating significantly larger pad. I could say as far as testing goes, I would think you would want a larger pad to get a better view. I don't know. And then we have a calibrating, a ca the calibrating table. 950, F6.5, three quarters of a depth. So wait, what was the, let's be fair. Let's see if it says at what depth the R and D goes for detection theft, plus or minus 19 millimeters. So what's 19 millimeters? It's three quarters. So just shy of three quarters of an inch. So this is gonna default to measuring at three quarters of an inch. So now we're doing an apples to apples comparison. Cool. Place the meter on the calibrator, ensure the sensor. Okay, so that's there. Ooh, that does, oh, that's nice. So the sensor is a little bit of a positive. I don't know if you guys can see that. And it nests right into the square. That's. It's a nice touch. So it nests right into it. We're on the calibration setting. Hold the meter in the air for approximately five, done. Okay, press on to return to normal metering. Okay, so three quarters, let's, okay, so we know that we're calibrated, beautiful. So I think we're ready. Uh, so let's grab our pine here, move our paperwork out of the way. Let's get this up onto the official laundry basket testing bed. And this says, what is this? This is C1, slight downward pressure, says 15.7. So now we have to change our settings because we're switching to oak, southern red oak, 0.59. So materials, 0.59. Uh, let's go B, B3, slight downward pressure. So this is maxing out at 32. 28.4, and now B1 maxing out at 32. That's red oak, 0.59. I don't know if this is southern red oak or northern red oak. Let's just see if there's a difference. 32, B3, maxed out. All right, so that's an interesting finding, legitimately interesting, because this unit might be so sensitive, and there's a combination of, I don't 
I don't know the difference between, I just know red oak. What's the difference between northern red oak and north, uh, and southern red oak? And there is a difference in the specific gravity, The one of the factors that goes into measuring content. Uh, but they're pretty much the same in the results. So turn that guy off. Overall, nice unit. You got to be a bit of a brainiac to use it. You would think with more more money, it would do more for you, but you have to be better at wooding in order to get the most out of it. Um, I don't think this is something that I'm going to hold on to. This is way overkill for a firewood person, uh, but for a furniture maker, uh, this is you know more along the caliber of what you need. So with that, I think it's time to put our buns in the oven. So now according to the ASTM, I'm to leave these in for about 18 to 24 hours. I'm gonna leave them in for 24 hours. How do I know they're done? What you're supposed to do is at the 18 or 20, 18, 19, 20, whatever you choose, take them out, weigh them, put them back in, and then come back and test them in an hour. If there's no difference, you know that it's done, and then we can come back and do our measurements. So for now, we're all wrapped up. We're gonna let these cook for about 24 hours. Cooking wood in my house. And now we only have to rely on one guy to do their job. Hey dog, you up there? All right, I need you now more than ever. All right, let me know if you smell anything. Welcome back, the next day. We're right at 24 hours-ish. Uh, that's not super important though, why? Because earlier today, I took the weights of all the samples. I didn't film it, this video is long enough. And then also at the same time, according to the ASTM, uh, found out what the lowest theoretical oven dry weight was going to be of the samples. And if my weights were within 0.01% of that hypothetical number, we knew that the wood was oven dry. It's not gonna get any drier than that. And at nine o'clock, all of the samples had hit below that number, meaning when they come out, they're gonna be like a sponge and actually start absorbing atmospheric moisture, and then their moisture content was gonna go up. So it's time now to remove all the samples for one last time, get our final weight measurements. All right, so I'm gonna pull out the A1s and A, A1 through A3. A2, A3. Ooh, hot, hot, hot. 500 grams. All right, so let's go. A1, 100.29. We're gonna let them sit, start doing some math. Full transparency, this is now the second time I'm filming the results and conclusion portion of this video because the first time I had proof watcher Ashley come down and check out the first iteration of it and this was the result. So I'm gonna punch it up a little for the TikTok crowd. Now I have all my data, all my calculations here and as one more layer to differentiate my video from the other videos, I actually had my data and procedures peer reviewed. I had Dr. Mike, who was the chief of research chemist, had to look that up on his LinkedIn because we just know him as Dr. Mike, review my testing procedures and my results. I did have to trade him two dozen eggs for it, but hey, this is a Homestead channel after all. And he concurred, testing procedure seems right, your results seem right, so what are the results? Without question, the Orion wins. <laughs> it's not even close. By, a, by any of the standards that I laid down, be it absolute error, uh, percent of error, standard deviation, variance, it's, <laughs> it's leaps and bounds better than any of the machines that we tested today. Number two behind that is the R&D. The R&D at $25 threw down some extremely accurate results and was able to repeat those results. So it's both accurate and repeatable. Uh, coming up third is the FLIR. Uh, the FLIR, not the most accurate. On my scale for percent of averages, it's not the most accurate, but it is good enough to come into third place. In fourth place, and I don't know if I mentioned it because I think it ended up on the cutting room floor, I tested the Orion 950 in its quarter inch depth mode to do an apples to apples to apples comparison to the other machines that are just pin testers. So they're getting a very small depth in their test, uh, the, the Testman and the FLIR. Uh, that was accurate. Uh, that was good enough for fourth place. And then finally, picking up the rear is the cheapest of the units, the Testman. It's just not a very accurate unit. However, according to my data, it was extremely repeatable. 
In the group of five here, it did come up in third place as far as repeatability went. So going back to what we talked about in other videos where guys were just sticking this into wood where they were showing repeatability, I'll give them that. This machine is extremely repeatable. It's just not very accurate. So it's repeating bad results. So what's my conclusion? After testing all these units, is there a difference between an expensive model and a cheap model? Yes. Is there also a difference between a pinned model and a pinless model? Also yes. As far as pinned units goes, there's definitely some pros and cons with these. Pros, super duper cheap. Like I said, this thing's like 10 bucks, but it's not that good. The next con is the holes that it creates in the wood. Uh, the average woodworker doesn't wanna have to deal with these holes. They gotta sand them or plane them out. It might affect their project. So a pinned unit might not necessarily be, be the best unit for a woodworker. But for a firewood person, it's probably not that big of a deal. Before we go on and we're talking about, and while we're talking about the holes, I wanna bring up another point. Earlier I said that the FLIR was the most expensive pinned unit that you can find on Amazon or that you could buy, and that was a bit of a misnomer. There are more expensive units that are technically pinned. You hammer long nails into the wood and you could test across those nails to get a more accurate measurement. Now, if we were just talking about these little teeny tiny holes that woodworkers have to deal with, could you imagine the reaction of big, gigantic, deep nail holes in it? The reaction would be somewhere between a stroke and a heart attack. I recognize that those meters are primarily used by folks with sawmills where the, the holes aren't that big of a deal. So for that reason, I didn't even enter them into this conversation. Also at the same time, they're just as expensive as, as the Orion or a Tramex. They're just as expensive. Just get the Orion, but I digress. And as far as the accuracy of a pinned unit goes, it's not just as easy as grip and rip as other videos make it seem. You really do have to get into the middle of the wood to test because the way wood dries from the outside in. You can't just surface test these to get an accurate measurement, whether you're concerned about selling wet wood to your customers or building creosote in your fireplace. You have to bust up a piece of wood, test the middle of it to really get an accurate gauge. I can't tell you how many times I've seen guys in videos or even in the comments saying, oh, I just walk down the line and I test the end of my boards. That's not even close to giving you an accurate reading of, of what your moisture content actually Actually is. It's a waste of time at least, and it's deceitful at most. Now on the other hand, you have the contact pinless models. These are super duper accurate. Number one and number two, as far as my testing is, is concerned, is the, is the pinless models. Are they a be all end all? Actually, no. I think the biggest concern for the firewood community is that number one, they have to be elevated up off the ground to get a really accurate measurement. But two, and much more pertinent to us, is they have to be tested against a flat surface of the wood. Now, generally speaking, oak does split in a flat plane. Is that good enough? I don't really know. But most of the time, it, it kind of looks like this in the finish finish and I don't know how accurate that's going to be. Now if we're talking about woodworkers where they have access to planers and things where the board's going to be nice and flat, there's no question. You have to get a pinless model. It, it's not even up for discussion. And for 25 bucks, the R&D isn't a bad option at all to get. As a matter of fact, this is probably going to be the one that I, I keep around from now on. Worked out pretty well. It's pretty accurate. And for 25 bucks, if it's chintziness turns out to be it's Achilles heel, just replace it, it's 25 bucks, not a bad deal. I'm obviously gonna keep the testman because they sent it to me. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. This data really doesn't lie. This might be a paperweight, I don't know. Maybe for them crusty pieces of wood, I'll be able to use this. I might have to use both. So after $2,000, at least 16 hours of filming, and I don't know how many hours of editing, thank you for watching the most comprehensive wood moisture content meter here on YouTube. I can't wait to duke it out in the comment section. Pro pin, pins all the way, pinless. That's not an oven. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I can't thank you enough. If you made it to this point of the video, you deserve the gold star of the day. Thank you again for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Good. Bye.